wholeness and balanced vibration to everyone and thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of Astro Quest. I'm gonna have to get the sound a little straight here because I can see the mics are spiking. <laughs> I actually came back in town yesterday. I've been doing a lot just getting things set up here and uh, getting stuff ready for the crew that's coming in. That's also why we're in the postseason show. I really don't want to start season two, and two until everyone gets here and on deck at the stations and able to source to you all the knowledge, information, visuals, videos, and things that are related to what I'm talking about. In addition, I feel like I can't even move into the heavier complexities of what I have to present to this world because I have to also operate a great deal of this equipment while I'm doing that. And any time that you're going into more of like prosumer grade or professional grade equipment, it tends to take a constant uh, monitoring in order to make sure it's working. And that's also why we started today's show a little bit late is that we had some um, upgrades that took place over the weekend with live stream and we need to make sure those upsa updates got installed. And then once they got installed, we had a few chip problems with our, uh, our cables. So I'm glad that we at least are able to, to get together today and, and to get this information out. Obviously, self-substantiation is a very major thing. So major, even getting the information transmitted properly becomes somewhat of a challenge, but quite rewarding. And that's really what I also want to tell people is that anything that presents a great deal of challenge also has a greater reward than most things that produce no challenge at all. And we'll talk about that. Let's just talk about something simple. If you are a weightlifter, let's say, and you say, uh, my target is to get to 300 pounds. I want to be able to curl 300 pounds. Now, obviously, in the period between you're actually able to, between when you're actually able to do that, there's going to be a lot of soreness, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of different troubles that you're going to run into uh, with your body and your body adjusting to this new level of strength. However, once you reach that point, it will not only serve to allow you to just pick up that 300 pounds, it'll also give you all the rest that was gained for you to be able to lift that, meaning your whole body will be stronger, you generally should have more wind. Uh, so a lot of things will actually happen because you set that particular goal. And so that's what today's show is really about. It's again a, a, in the middle of a season show because it's one of those shows that's not really for everyone. And I mean that because there's a lot of people that are really needing some major assistance in this reality. And true enough, you'll be able to extract everything that you need from this show. But the ability to be able to do what I'm talking about definitely is, is particular to each individual and how much motivation they find in doing such things. All of what we've um, been going through in this reality, a lot of it is tied into our motivation as far as how much we can really achieve. Because if you're really motivated, I'm sure you found with yourself, whether that's money motivated or sexually motivated or whatever kind of motivation or energy that you're using, when you find yourself motivated about something, that energy generally is, allows you to accomplish certain things. And so today is about really getting motivated about being self-substantiated, which in itself is about basically having full responsibility and control, which allows you to be able to blend, metamorphosize, shape shift, time travel, whatever you would like to call it, through the tunnels and the paths of your past, present, and future self. And of course, the major realization that all this self will bring you to that self-substantiation is about being unlimited and tapping into unlimited potential. And what of course goes on before then is the, the actual procedures that need to take place to get you ready to really experience who you are. If you notice, there are some individuals on the dimension, we have examples of everything here, but we have some individuals that are on the dimension that actually have um, gone crazy. You can find them in the crazy house. And of course, if you go to Jerusalem, as I talk about, there is many individuals in there with what's called Jerusalem syndrome, which is when you chant mantras for a prolonged period of time and then something happens, you can go crazy because what happens in the, the raising of energy in your body or the remembering of, of different paths and different things that we've all collectively been through is that the initial shock of that information becoming experienced by you can even damage the system if you're not prepared. And so let's talk about that. Actually, this conversation today is going to be 
It's going to be as lengthy as possible. If I can get it done very fast as far as getting this information to you, then we'll be done. But if it needs to be lengthy because I'm still having uh, the withdrawals of dealing with this equipment and the, the different meltdowns and not starting the show at 11 o'clock, then I'll wait until I get to the point where I start moving like the fast train and get completely comfortable with the message that I have to present because I've actually been working on this message in particular for about a week and a half. I've had some massive conversations with a few individuals just about this particular topic. I've even talked to Dan Winter about a few things in regards to how our energy functions and uh, how other groups or hive mind groups energies function. And I've been able to really put together a very nice, I don't even like to call it a theory because it's to me stronger than a theory. A theory is generally something that's presented and then it then has to be proven to be true. I believe that what I'm really dealing with here is something that we all have to begin to take a look at for us to find the fine integers. But if we just use um, what's happening in daily life and the symbolism behind that and the shapes that are emitted behind that, I think that we'll start getting right on the top of how to crack this matrix. So self-substantiation is definitely about cracking the matrix. So let me do this. Obviously, uh, I'm going to have to get on the board today. So I do have the board set up for me to get on there and to show some things, especially here first, so that all of this becomes a little bit more clear. So I'm going to go ahead and transition into the board and then I'm going to head over there after I plug in this particular laptop because it looks like that it doesn't have any more power. And so here we go. It's funny because these electronics always need power. They always need to be plugged in. If you ever notice, you have so many devices with you from your cell phone to um, radios to controllers to all this stuff and it all needs power. And because this stuff was emulated, all emulated, based on the universe, nature, organic, what, what, uh, what have you, then in many tenses, you can actually extract the information or uh, what I would call a template of the information of what's really going on here on this dimension from other objects. You don't always have to use yourself as the specimen. And... Um, that also allows you to become non-biased because when you start seeing what's happening to other entities and other beings, you start to develop more compassion and you kind of stop forgetting about your, you start forgetting, forgetting about your situation and how bad it may be. Okay, my camera's here. You, may stop forget, you start forgetting about your situation and how bad it may be. And in fact, you start seeing, well, shoot, my situation is not bad at all. If I'm on internet right now, then my situation is nothing like so many other people around the world where there's a complete lockdown of who they are because of the particular soul group that they're in. So we need to first talk about soul groups. And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and check in the chat box to make sure everything's loud and clear so we don't get started here and, uh, you know, find out that, you know, we weren't even recording. Also, I do have, speaking of recording, a full copy of today's show being recorded live now. And of course, that will be made available to everyone after the show at some point when we can get it online. So let me check in here. Okay, great. So it looks like everyone is clear. Thanks, someone, for notifying me. Destiny, appreciate that. And also, let me just check on the recorder and see how much battery power it has. <laughs> All right, the recorder looks like it's got six hours. So let's do this. Self-substantiation. Now, there are going to be some symbols that I need to show you. I've got to remember where my camera is. I'm going to show you some symbols that are used heavily in the dimension. Some of these symbols have even been thrown under the bus by myself because the current explanation of these symbol symbols are whack. And it's always going to be that way if someone's lying about the meaning of the symbol. So the first thing that I want you to see is this triangle in particular also known as a prism, this is a two-dimensional triangle, two, at two dimensions, a triangle. Now, there is something that most people know about, and that's if, and this happens to be a prism here that I'm holding in my hand, it's, it's of course, um, transparent, so you may not be able to see it much. But according to the laws in which you can practice at your own house, you don't have to believe them from anyone, if you shine a light into this prism, out the other side will come a rainbow of seven colors. Okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? 
Now, this again is something that you can try at home. So this is not the Illuminati. <laughs> what also happens if, is if you can then move another prism very close to this other prism when those seven rays shine out, when it goes into that prism, it'll actually come back out as that solid white light that was put initially into it. And you'll find that this particular transformation of energy is redundant everywhere you go. And it's become a part of a, a title of something that I'm just calling energy incubation. energy incubation, okay? Because what you'll start to realize is that everything on this reality down to the atomic level and even smaller than that <laughs> is based on being an energy incubator. In order to stay alive, to function, to live, to be animate, you need to get energy from somewhere. And where you get energy from determines what kind of being you are how much you have access to, how expanded you really are, how much you really know, all of that is based on what kind of energy you're taking in. So today we're going to talk about light energies also, like minerals, lighter energies. Energies not like flesh, which is what a lot of people are using. They're using the eating meats and things as a form of energy, okay? So what happens here then is a simple system that you can draw like this. Okay? When the seven rays goes in, if it's another prism there to meet it, it collapses back into a zero point and then spreads out again. So this would be something like this if you were to draw it out. And I tried this yesterday, the, the other day. Like this. And so now imagine your body is exactly like this, giant. That your entire energy system functions this way. Now, today I'm actually going to be talking about something that's already happening, too. I'm not going to be talking about too many things that, that are in fringe and we don't know about. This energy system that you're utilizing is allowing you to function right now. If I didn't have this working, I couldn't stand up straight. I couldn't even appear here on the camera. So I'm not talking about something that you haven't accomplished already. I'm talking about something that is being mismanaged inside of you. And I have, um, I'm trying to see, I, I had another uh, device that I could show documents on, but <laughs> somehow it just gave up earlier. So I have to figure out how to get these images up. I'll probably go to break, take some screenshots of it, or I'll probably just reset that unit and I'm sure it'll work. But I want you to see that all of the ancient symbols, such as, um, I think this, some are, know this as the Maltese cross, something like this, okay? And then the actual cross itself are all exhibited under high power microscopes when watching DNA. That these symbols don't mean a group of men running around the Holy Land, even though they may have been venturing out to discover more about this. The symbols themselves are down to such an atomic and even microatomic level as how it displays itself to us inside of us. Then the only thing a person can really do when they grab a symbol like this and then somehow take over it is basically convince you that they are your creators. Because these symbols relate to creation long before these people taking credit for it even got here. So we're actually living in a time where someone can say this cross means Jesus Christ. And this star means the Knights of Malta. When it had nothing to do with that. So... This is the, the big thing that we have to do now is we have to go back over all of the symbolisms very briefly in order to really grasp what self-substantiation is. Now, before we do that, I'm going to show you something else that has been puzzling people just to show that we are on a template ourselves when we choose to use time and we choose to have seven days of the week. 
365 days a year. When we choose these specific coordinates, it actually governs our frequency. If we were living in a world that told us you're not to sleep at night, trust me, you would not be sleeping at night. But because we are in a group or hive mind, let me keep that close, when the hive mind says, hey, everyone's supposed to sleep at night, unless you're working, or the hive mind says, hey, everyone's supposed to go to school. When the hive mind says something, everyone follows. So this hive mind thing that everyone's talking about that that's could happen or going to happen is something that's already happened. In fact, most people couldn't even function on this planet without being in some type of hive or soul group themselves. So this is key. It's time to stop playing games here, acting like everyone is equal. Adequacy comes in that we are all a part of the same body known now as the universe. But the universe means united, that's uni, verse, meaning conflict. So, as in verses, Ken versus Ryu. <laughs> right? So, united in conflict is what you're really looking at with your body, your actual physical body is in a state where it's functioning, but the mouth can totally eat something that will destroy the liver, as if they're at war with each other. The legs can be made to walk until they're so tired, but the mind is saying, I got to get there. So this whole conflict of who's in control and who's in charge is actually happening in the body before it ever took place actually it happened in the spiritual realm, then the body, and before it ever took place in this physical reality, okay? So now see that these differentiations that you have within human beings is very similar to why the liver and the lung are different. Why there's a Mars and why there's a Venus and why there's a Saturn, that there's a different level of chemicals, lights, variations, integers, all these different things that make up this difference. Now this difference is also known as the child, Okay, the child. And the reason is, is that any time two fixed components come together, then they create another component, right? And then this component is, the, uh, is this plus this, and even has its own sauce added to it. Now, if this decides also to go and find a mate, then they create something else, and it has this plus this plus this plus this and its own mixture to it, okay? So this is why also you have so many different variations on this planet, because this is a very basic rudimentary chart thrown in, so shown in 3D. The integers behind this are, in, are infinite. Like if you were looking into the actual uh, uh, cells of all this taking place, there would be an unlimited amount, just like you, there would be new amounts continuing to appear just as if you look into any module of space. And this uh, switcher quit here, so hopefully we're still on. Just like if you're looking into any module of space. Now, in space meaning all the stars, all the planets, all the celestial bodies, the Oort cloud, all these different things. You see all these particles and lights and super huge stuff. Some of this stuff even on the planet, like you look at a mountain and you start feeling really small. Self-substantiation is about taking your magnetic body and making it larger than your physical body. So that way you can expand and actually connect into the web of time. But let's not go too fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the rudimentary chart. I'm not telling you that there's seven of this and eight of this and 12 of this. I'm just using this as a diagram based on knowledge that we can prove in our house. This is a template probably for how multiple planets work with different number variations. In addition to that, generally none of these systems function on numbers like seven, meaning the, the master point or control point, always functions on the system of nine. And the reason is because nine continues to roll into itself as if it's the number of infinite energy, right? So what happens is, is that what you really get is you get these seven colors, but you get what's called the black light or absent light, and then you get the original light that was sent into it, and then this creates two more, one, two, or basically eight and nine, okay? So that's the spectrum, but when you're not seeing that, then you're basically governed by this, and this is actually what makes up our zodiac, because if you didn't notice, Many of the people that are in the zodiac seem to act the same. 
It's like, man, are you a Sagittarius or are you a Scorpio? And then, yeah, it's because that in itself is a soul group. This is what it says, horoscope, okay? And of course, that became the name for their God. So the scope itself obviously has to do with the prism, obviously has to do with the breakdown of light. So what they're saying is, is that this is the breakdown of light from this particular soul group. And they love to give the name, but again, let's just use it as a template. So that soul group consists of what they call animal energies. Now, of course, in our system, there's 12. And this is why I keep telling you that you can't get stuck on any of these numbers. You only look at the system and the method because you got seven up here. Now you got 12 down here. What's happening? It's called evolution. It's called when these continue to burp, you got one meets two, and then that comes out, two meets three, then these two meet, you see? So you get these different variations, and pretty soon the numbers get into a Google. You know, I'm thinking some people don't even still realize that Google was one of the highest numbers that could be pronounced. That's what Google is a specific, it's basically a one with a hundred zeros behind it. And the Googleplex was, um, was that times itself. So that's why it became the most popular search browser because they named themselves after the highest number that we currently could pronounce a while ago. Now I'm sure they figured out other numbers. You may want to create a site and name it after that. You want to play the earth game. So what happens is now you see this seven color spectrum, right? This is what they called P-L-E-I-D-E-S. P-L-E-A. I. I believe that'll get us to Pleiades. Yeah. Seven sisters. Okay? Or I always say, let's play these. Because these are the divas. Because if you actually are born on a physical planet, you're born out of a womb. So regardless of what you were before, you've now added another body onto that. And this is what we were talking about here, how there's, you know, one plus one, now two, and then you start adding because now you've added this uh, devocanic body, which gives you an experience on a physical plane that will go with you if you are able to move with compassion, meaning that in this world, all of your experiences will go with you if you become compassionate by the end of your life. If you never reach compassion and full on what people call love, you will forget everything that's here because it's, you will only have a low density experience and the low density can't move into the higher vibration. So what I'm telling you is, is that during the, what they call the reincarnation process, when the, every, a person dies, it happens, then they come out of the body. Now, if, they are all, if all of their experiences are dense experiences, they stay in the body. All of the sex and the debauchery and the thievery and the drunkenness and the jealousy and all that, is th those are fleshly-based and animal-based traits. So they stay there, and what leaves is whatever can be estranged from it. So remember, that means if you engage most of your life in these negative activities, when it's time to be weighed, for better lack of words, there will be nothing really left. And so there will be little memory about what happened last life, just some you know, residue when you incarnate again, versus if you can get into higher levels of experience here that are the experiences that are etheric experiences that will carry with you beyond the physical body, then you'll be fully conscious of what's going on as you move throughout your incarnations. Now, not all incarnations are physical. That should be known also, but we're not going to skip ahead. We get here again, to this, the reason why I'm explaining this to you is because you have to understand the seven wombs. What makes the Nordic man not the African man? What makes the China man not like the Mesoamerican man? What makes us different? It's this color spectrum, right? The color in many ways, right? Because the reality is, all humans are the same to me. If you've got two arms, two legs, and a head, then I'm already understanding you from a different level. I'm, I'm down into the, the microcosmic level of trying to feel what you're talking about. 
I'm not looking at the color of your skin and things like that because to me, you all have skin. You see, everyone has skin no matter what color it is. Everyone has eyes, most people. Everyone has feet. So why we always look at these differentiating integers at times, we're totally just choosing to do that because really there's so many things that are the same you can start moving right in to work with what was the real job here. And we'll explain that here in a moment. But the riddle to that is individuals such as Ku Kolkan did, did not return. <laughs> the children did. Meaning that if you can map out any ancestor on the timeline that has magnificent power, Ku Kolkan, Thoth, whoever you want to name, they have not come back here. <laughs> There's no back for them, if you really understand energy. But what was left is their children, meaning that all the knowledge, all the information, all the genes, all the things that were created, the animals, the essence, the trees, all that is still here and has affected us, and that has made us uh, united with them. Again, that's the whole universe. Okay? It's, it's united, right? That's why you have the united states and the united kingdom right everyone's in it together <laughs> regardless of whoever no, whoever wherever we're going if someone doesn't want to get in and be an architect and want to drive on their own and start self-substantiating figuring out more vistas and more planes to get ready to really lead people into see we all follow to a certain degree if you didn't follow you wouldn't even speak english you wouldn't even speak so this also this whole game that, oh, no ego, no one needs to be the mentor, no one needs to be, what we're actually coming into is information that being assist, assisting someone and helping someone expand is not the problem. The problem is you have too many people that are assisting individuals to go in the wrong direction. They encourage you, yo, man, let's go to the club tonight. Hey, man, let's, let's go do this, man, let's, let's go drink, let's go. So it's just individuals, they're being leaders too. Now look. They complain about the ones who are trying to spiritually teach people's levels of advancement. Oh, you can't do that. You can't say that, right? But then when the person, the person that's go, is suggesting, even on the commercial, hey, eat this cheeseburger, or in, hey, go to the club, a friend, or even a mother saying things that, hey, j j drink this, this medicine, nothing is said about them. So notice the play. Any individual that comes bringing spiritual knowledge about emancipating you into higher levels of energy is always going to be uh, made to appear as if they are not the truth and that they are deceivers and that, man, I walk into a place, a person immediately will call me a devil when the real devil is right behind me. <laughs> you see what I mean? The real person that may come in behind me is the one engaging in all the crazy attitude, but they may be the one that is getting the most treatment of it as they're being nice. And the person may judge that based on the color of my skin. You see? So the whole thing is all mixed up. So this is another thing that I want to tell people, especially the ones that get lost and can't comprehend. Hang in there. Because the fact of the matter is, if you can't figure out what go is going on in this world, what makes you think that the answer to it is going to make, is you're just going to understand right away? Meaning that if the world is so crazy, then shouldn't the answer to why it's so crazy be a little crazy? Of course, because the two match. So you have to be willing to see that the reason why not too many people have come up to the full revelation of what exactly is happening here on Earth is that they haven't been able to expand across the spectrum. Now, what you have here, and I got to kind of get some stuff off the board, is obviously the wombs. And this is why you have Mother Russia, Mother, uh, 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 mother Africa, and the United States itself is uh, a mother with the Statue of Liberty hanging out on, on the harbor. You see, Egypt itself was a mother. You see, Ethiopia and the, the Horn of Africa, Nubia, was a mother. You see, Hungary and these kind of countries as mothers. You see, the Caucasus Mountains as mothers, but different kind of mothers. And this is why you don't find the same kind of mother. See, er, some women don't even want their children. You've witnessed it. Don't play like the universe doesn't produce women that don't even like their children. You see, so there, everything is going on here. That's why self-substantiation is also about growing up. Growing up, not down. Being able to actually get to a standpoint of, your, of you being able to see, oh, this is what's going on. It's actually me. Now, here's the thing. 
There's a major part of self-substantiation, especially for those who have been comprehended, and that may be in a situation where they, maybe they don't have any money. Maybe they're, they're trying to figure out, well, how do I even do this? Because I can't even start. Like, I'm, if I need a cleanse or if I need to do something with my body, I don't even know how to begin. See, that's not self-substantiation. Self-substantiation means I will go work at McDonald's for a month just to take my first check and buy internal cleanse, then cleanse my body, and then I go up from there. That's what I discovered, that the actual frequency of the body determines the currency. Some people have very, very high frequencies, and then those frequencies are being bottlenecked. So let's talk, let me, let me show you the chart here, and this will this will let you understand a little bit more simpler. Hmm. Let's see how many I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got seven wombs. Okay. Now, these wombs can be seen as hives. Okay. And this is why this whole reptilian thing got out of line, got out of control. Because people lost what the symbolism really meant. Because if you saw this in Egypt, they actually made each of these seven rays. Actually, it was nine because they had an Enneagram. But they made each of these seven, these seven rays, nine rays in their case again, serpents. And this is why you always saw individuals such as Krishna riding on the back of the Naga with the seven heads. And you, you will love to, when we finally have all our stuff together, somebody will be able to go to that right away and show it to you. But you always see these images. I know I'm not trying to draw here. <laughs> and you'll see Krishna riding on this boat in the pictures, and he'll be laying on a Naga. In fact, you'll see multiple Hindu gods doing that because what it really says is zoomorphication for saying that I've been born from the womb of the universe. Now, this system known as the Pleiades sits in a constellation known as the Taurus, right? This is the, what we call a bovid or a cow, okay? And now you can start to visualize why the cow itself is, is such a deep connection to especially woman with cow being a mammal, right? And then a cow having milk, right? A cow mooing, okay? And even the moon, when you understand this knowledge and what happened in the beginning with the first children or sons that incarnated into this particular sphere. But what happens is, is that in all of this, you have wombs. This is why the cow becomes one of the powerful symbols of the constellation of Taurus, because it is basically emitting the different entities into their incarnations. So it's basically like this. When you leave a world, we'll call it station one, station two, station three, station four, station five, station six, station seven, okay? You leave out of a world, let's say Earth, uh, 5.7, because <laughs> there's a lot of Earths. Anyone with a third eye knows that. So you're in Earth 5.7, you leave the dimension, right? You exit, you die, which means to split. Die means two. You split from the cocoon, which is the body. So you split from the body. So long, body. Thanks for everything. Now you have the men a mental body, which is sometimes referred to, a mental body that comes with you. This mental body is all your experiences and things like that, but it's ethereal, so it's capable of traveling. I'm talking about the ones who's had these experiences that can move into those densities. So now when you come up Earth 5.7, and we're just using basic numbers here, let's say, for instance, when your frequency is tested out, you get pinged. You're p you ping frequency at 6.9 now. Okay? So now they're saying, oh, 6.9. He can go to this color now. He's ready, <laughs> or she's ready. Send him in the, through the womb, 6.9. Now, the reason why these wombs were looked at as serpents in one tense, dragons in another, that's really the best because it really gives us the, the drama or the dragon mother. A dragon ma, okay. That's the drama. It's because what they're saying is, is that the serpent is like a sheath 
All of the words that are synonymous with ancient in ancient languages about the serpent say is sheath or skin is the synonymous word. Because what they're saying is, is that while these entities that are moving through these incarnations are moving through their incarnations in schools of experience, they are actually being sheathed or protected by these seven wombs. Now, earth is one of these wombs. That's why I was saying that when the light shines from this, it, it creates everything else that is seen on the dimensions below. This is why if you look at a Masonic template, you'll see that the middle pillar, which is generally accompanies a ladder, is leading to this seven-pointed star only because the seven-pointed star, also known as the elven star, is related to the Pleiades. And so they're saying, oh, back through the Pleiades, but guess what? It doesn't mean go worship Pleiades. It means that this is where the light from some point in time went into the prism and came out like this. Where you need to be is on this side. You need to be understanding, understanding that all is self and move out of division. Division costs a lot of energy. In fact, the entire plane is built on combustion. That's why it became known as the serpent. Because the pentagram, of course, is phi. Phi, of course, is the golden ratio. The golden ratio leads to the golden door. The golden door gets you into the golden houses. The golden houses, if you ask someone in China, are the pyramids. And the pyramids are actually the symbols and geometrical correspondence of energy incubators. Now, energy incubation in itself then means you inside of a body, whether you're in fights, wars, laughter, joy, happiness, you're emitting something. But as my good friend Pierre Sabak says, you have to be quick because there are things being done that you cannot see because the entities that are doing them are moving quicker than you. Now this is why they don't have physical bodies. The physical body is very dense. Remind me to break down completely the pent here in a moment in physicality and how if you get stuck thinking that you are ri really a body, physicality, then you remain pinned in to planets. You don't graduate. This is called abort. Me and a good friend were talking about this. You keep coming in and out of the womb over and over. Obviously, the controllers here on the dimension just want you to abort. They just want you to move in this circle. <laughs> Keep coming in and back in and back in and back in. They don't want you down and in, 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 in up in these other worlds. They want to control you here where they have you, right? So to be quick. Now, somebody asked me the other day, do I really believe that the stars and the actors, the ones in Hollywood, are being used to siphon energy from people? And I said, absolutely. And they said, well, I don't, I, something, they said to me that that type of idea, they just lose it when they think about that kind of idea, because surely these people couldn't know that they're doing that. And I said, you're right, because the entity that is in charge of them is quick, and thus they can't see what's happening, and so thus they don't know about what's happening. But if you're quick too, smart and quick, then you can see it too. You're like, oh, okay, I see what happens. Let's take Elmo. <laughs> Tickle me Elmo. Now, Tickle Me Elmo obviously is a little bitty Elmo doll, right, that children love. But who created Elmo? Because this Elmo is actually the same as Emo, which is actually turns energy in the opposite direction. It's like a lower energy, and Els means the god, okay? So this means that whoever owns Elmo owns the actual vibration and tone for what Elmo is. And the character, more importantly, the character of what Elmo is. Because if I show you the Elmo doll, you'll say, that's Elmo, right? So anytime someone is giving the, re the reverence to any external entity, be it Elmo, the entities that control that, that they have branded that character known as Elmo, siphon that energy just as when a person would tell another person, hey man, you did an excellent job. The only difference is they don't need to be right next to you to do it. See, this is what people are not really seeing. <laughs> really, they're not seeing it. You think that 
the owners of Tickle Me Elmo would need to be in the room with the child in order to siphon the energy from the child. No, they don't. They only need to create characters. Now, this is also what I discovered when, when I was early on the path. I kept running into these people from Orion. And these individuals that were obviously modern witchcraft and all that stuff is, is, is uh, Orion-based hodgepodge. People don't even know how to interpret the knowledge. They can't even read themselves. Now they want to go and dig into the universe. But what was really talked about by most of these people, and what I started when I would observe them, because if you don't talk much, you can see what everyone is doing. So as I observed them, I noticed they were heavily involved with creating children's books, Do like Dr. Seuss. Okay? And also the Seuss, obviously the Seuss is the same as why Jesus has a Seuss in the back of his name. I'll let everyone dig that out later on. He's really Dr. Fish. Okay? So who's Dr. Fish? Is of course Dagon. Who's Dagon? Oannes. Okay? So Dr. Fish's book teaches the, the tones, the vibrations, the riddles to children of how to evoke a wazzy wuzzle. <laughs> what is that? No one talks about a wazzy wuzzle except for in Dr. Seuss's books. But that's the whole thing I figured out that these, these individuals were doing is they create new characters and then they make sure they have control over the character and then they introduce the character into different stages into the person or child's mind. It's a different character. Obviously, like uh, uh, Cookie Monster is crazy for cookies and Big Bird is really nice and loving. And then El, uh, Grouch, he's in the trash. You see, so this is how they begin to zoomorphy, but through uh, um, puppets. The exact same, through the exact same method that the ancestors used to zoomorphy the real energies on Earth. Okay? Now, remember, energies are complex. It's not just one particular energy coming through. So sometimes a character can be infused with several different essences. Okay? Let me uh, find my anchor point here. Because what I want you, I'm going to have to put this somewhere. What I want you to get you to see here is, is that to create something, which you still have the opportunity to do here in this world, you can create a new name, a new tone, a new vibration, and you can begin to define what that is. The problem with this world is that it creates tones of vibrations and children and all that stuff. And when it goes into defining them, or even what I would say, it should be refine, refining them, it doesn't do it the proper way. So let me look at this. Now let me go to my notes. I actually said all that. And now I'm going to go to my notes and so you can get the concise explanation of this whole thing. Excuse me. Get another marker here. Get smaller. And obviously this is another board, so it doesn't have the little holder. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about now accomplishing organic fusion. How do you actually get your body to generate enough energy? That's not going to work. So that way you can even start to experience any of what is going on. So now we need to talk about why a person cannot experience all this stuff that I'm talking about. They're like, man, this is, I can see it, but I don't know how it happens. Well, now in your body, it's already happening. So this is why it becomes a little tricky because if something that you're trying to find is already going on inside of you, but you're looking outside for it, imagine how long it'll take you to find it. So, and then, of course, everything that you find will only be parts and pieces of it. So you'll be on this extra long quest of finding out who you are. But every time something new is added, you now have to actually go and find that out, too, before you actually become in full knowledge of who you are. So then this is, becomes like a never-ending thing, and this is what's called unlimited. This is how the universe actually accomp accomplished unlimited potential by never having something that everyone can say, I know for sure, 100%, that in a 1,000 years, this particular thing is going to take place. Like, in realities like this, man, you don't even know where this thing is going. That's what keeps it unlimited. Now, notice that... I want, I want to define this pen really briefly because when you have, these you have these physical planes, right, which we'll just call uh, their phi, we'll call them phi plates, phi or actually dodec, 
dodecahedrons. Okay? Now, in the decahedron, five base dimensions, this is realm dynamics. You have entities coming out with generally five. I repeat, five. Or is it five senses? They primarily focus on. Okay, now, right off the bat, you can see there's a sixth sense, right? So, sixth sense individual is actually aware of another reality, right? One that most people can't see, right? So, when you're talking about sixth sense, seventh sense, eighth sense, ninth sense, this becomes a person becoming more aware of realities. Okay? Now, I also wanted to talk about this symbol. Sometimes I just think of something, sometimes it's greater, less. I'll talk about it later, maybe greater than and less than. <laughs> and this, you know, again, how can you take one of the same symbols and say one is greater and one is less? Because these two symbols in duality, one would be male and one would be female. So that means that the male would be greater than the female depending on whatever one you determine who to be the female. The female would be greater than the male. And this is the flaws with these mathematical systems. So you understand numbers are actually sent to divide, and that's why the division symbol is like this. This is a wall here. These are souls. One can't see the other, meaning that is not aware of the other. You're not aware of the other plane, etc. But anyway, now realm dynamics, dodecahedrons, dodecahedron portals, okay? These are five base bodies. Now, when you come in from the prism, here we go again. Now, phi is used to actually struct, shape, form the body in these particular planes, not in all of them. And this also gives different levels of urges and different levels of ab uh, uh, abilities. And this is where you get these soul groups, okay? Soul groups, okay? Because what the soul groups are is, have you ever wondered if you go to China, you see Chinese people that have not blended with anybody else? They're still 100% Chinese. You go to India, you find that going on, right? And then you find the people just as their ancestors, their uncles, their, ge their genealogies, and all that is intact because they're all in one soul group. So they're traveling through this experience together. Now, I'll tell you that humans are not the only ones on soul groups. Obviously, animals are also on soul groups. Animal soul groups. Okay? So you have animal soul groups, and the reason why you know animals are moving on a soul group is because when a bird, when it's time for the birds to migrate, all the birds get up and go. <laughs> you don't find birds sitting back there saying, I'm not going to migrate this year, it's just like I'm tired, I just... You see? So you can also see how part of you is on a soul group and another part of you is not. And when you're not on a soul group, it actually moves into more choice. But the dangerous part about this is, is that soul groups generally lead each other into the next level of the experience. So when you branch off away from the soul group and you're now responsible for yourself, you, can have the, you do have the potential of leading yourself into the wrong direction. This is now, to give you some more of this soul group situation, we have to go to the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> A collapse religion into simplification of what's going on. <laughs> the Lord's Prayer. Now, first of all, who's the Lord? Who is the Lord? L-O-W-E-R-E-D. What is the identification of this entity? Because this entity is running all around the dimension saying it's the Lord, and millions of people believe it's the Lord. So who is it? This Lord is actually the moon. Because the moon is the lowest celestial body to our planet, no, and that's why it's known as the Lord. And all of its symbols are related. That's why people, that's why people uh, look to the Lord for their sustenance, because they look to the moon for their substance. The moon grows all the things here. The moon, when the moon is full, everything is going into vegetation. 
And they say also, since the moon is control of life, the moon may be also control of death. Meaning in the waning cycle, certain things show that they die. But they seem to be in the govern, they're being governed by this soul group called the moon. And when you look deep into the symbolism, you'll find out that the reason why they had this horn god, which was the god of the forest, and Bacchus and the horny revelry related to fertility, is exactly the same reason why they have the moon. And as Dan Winter points out, the moon actually is a vessel for all of the, the misshaped and... Uh, uh, actually, let me look right at the notes. I like to quote uh, properly, but what you find in the moon... Oh my goodness, my notes look crazy here. Okay, but basically what you're dealing with is the moon itself is holding or is a receptacle... I guess I didn't even write it down, but the moon itself is a receptacle for the DNA that has been utilized throughout this planet's history. And what they, are knowing, what they know as a, a, a horned Draco, which is what you see in Samaria, already is using the moon as a vessel in itself, the moon being a metallic object that can also emit energies to control the natures of individuals. And this is why when it comes into zoonorphication, it shows that the Sumerians have domesticated, the Sumerian lord domesticated all the animals. Th what it's really saying is, is that the Sumerian lords controlled the animal urges through the moon and when they populate and when they do different things. And so if you become physical or more based on the physical, because you're eating a lot of animals and you're going into these frequencies, then it's easy for them to be control you from the moon because you're in that soul group. And this is why the moon, of course, again, the horn god, deer, cow, it's really a specific kind of meat. And when you eat that, it gets in the body and it's dense. So you're controlled by the lowered, because the lowered is more dense, why the higher is more ethereal. So for those who are looking for relief in the reality, like that's going to ever end, that is a key component to keeping re uh, realities like this generating. That's why you get the other symbol. This is the most powerful symbol, by the way, on the dimension as far as how it's being used. You find millions bowing down to this, these symbols. And this is why, because now you get the pentagram, which is phi, 72 degrees times phi, 360 degrees around the circle, aborting, staying in this one sphere known as, let's say, the moon. Okay, that particular state of mind and consciousness, soul group, etc. Now, it's also been proving here, if you go and do your research, that Mecca, which is, of course, the place that they circumambulate the cube itself, cube then being, again, a womb, the covenant is by salt. Salt exhibits the cube in its geometry, okay? And what you'll find is, is that this is actually the, um, the, phi, the first main phi point of Earth. And even the, the, the uh, word Allah, Lu, actually means the center or the needle point or middle point of the cube. So you basically find that all of the worship in religion is delegated to the Lord, and the Lord is the one managing all of those individuals because the people say, not just in uh, the English language, but we'll use that in the Lord's Prayer, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not wander. Okay, that's a soul group. You're saying that this entity, whether it's an archangel, angel, archon, demigod, whatever, is your leader, and you're not going to wander away from that because he makes me lie down in green pastures. I think it continues from there. So it makes them do what it wants them to do, meaning causing fertility, keeping up with the same phi base nature, and never going beyond the moon, which is again the first step on the ladder. So you can see how this ties in because if you notice that then what the indigenous people were, were uh, showing, especially with their totem animals, is that they knew already that they had come from these soul groups. And I'm excuse me, not come from, but in a soul group. And that that soul group was continuously progressing through incarnations of more complex vehicles, also known as bodies. 
and that these vessels in their level of, of greatness would, the greater those vessels became, it gave the individual more of a sense of, um, excuse me, more of a sense. We looked at it before, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten senses, right? Okay, so look again as when you see that some people say they're, they're so in the soul group of the wolf. Some are in the soul group of the ham. The ham. Some are, are in the soul group of the RH, uh, rhesus. Some are in the soul group of, uh, uh, you name it. There's bird tribe people st running around still doing that. There are dragons and Draco saying they're in the soul group of that. There are individuals that say they're from Syria. So you see how what happens here on the planet is if you never get that you're actually everything, that you end up stuck in one soul group or another, only doing the culture of that particular soul group, that the culture of each of these soul groups is like a customs. And we talked about that before. It's the customs, meaning that you have to begin to act like this in order to get into that group. So the ancients had the latter. They knew what was up here and what was down here. And depending on what they wanted to do, they knew where to go. So if they knew that they wanted to go all the way back to the seed of civilization again, then they needed to go back into the mineral kingdoms and some of the chemical kingdoms, okay? And maybe in the gas kingdoms in certain senses, okay? I'm, again, just using rudimentary templates here, nothing finite, stuff that you can really develop on your own. So, and in these systems, there's no consciousness, um, excuse me, there's no, act, the, the consciousness is not um, instinct, it's instinctual consciousness. See, a hive mind, and let me explain it, the hive mind is, again, what tells you to go and migrate. If you don't know to even migrate, because you don't even know migration, you're, you're not even supposed to do migration, how are you supposed to get that information? So what you'll find is in, is in, the, uh, in these groups that, the knowledge and information and the firmware, for better lack of words, of where you need to go and what you need to do next is embedded, okay? It's only until you get up here that you start to, um, you start to have these ideas of different levels of things to do. And now, to continue this chart, you would have to use terms of what they've described in this world as angels, archangels, demigods, right? This is English, demigods, gods, um, and I guess most high, okay? So that's, and then only thing that this is is full awareness that all of this is going on. You see what I mean? Like this entity has already achieved full knowing, and you're in this ladder and of course this ladder is your spine, of going through these different stages. Now obviously you have different bodies. I'm drawing, different, I'm drawing men here, but you don't get to the phi-based body until you get around here. So what are the animals then? And the animals are in vessels that are preparing them to become human next. But some animal vessels are a lot further from being humans than others. As I tell you about the monkey, the, uh, the, uh, the cat, and the, and the pig are closer to being humans than the standard bird. You see what I mean? The pigeon. <laughs> so you can still, though, start to scratch your, 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 uh, your chin and realize that, hmm, this thing's got several levels. So I could even be in a human body for a prolonged period of time before I ever discover what it is to really be a human. Like, the abilities of the human with all this equipment, it's almost like they put you on a level that is so expansive for you to actually utilize all of this is going to take you, if you don't know this kind of knowledge, like forever. <laughs> and that's what creates this will. Now, now you'll see why they said that these serpents were synonymous with knowledge. Why? Why are these synonymous with knowledge? It's because it's a lesson. Is not earth, even though it is, from what I'm viewing most of the time on the news and things like that, man, it's wide open. But does it not teach, especially if you want to be taught, a great deal? 
of knowledge. Now, would it still not be true then that this knowledge from the tree, again, this is the tree, of good and evil would then only place you either here or here? Evil, good, in on one of these polarities. So what happens is, is that to move out of this polarization, you need to find the harmonic point because each of these fields are only extremes of each other and basically are worlds that don't go anywhere. They're like the lamb on the path. And we talked this out the other day, and we come to the conclusion that entities that say they're the highest, magnificent, brightest, hallelujah, that kind of entity is the one that's the one they're saying they're good, right? And they don't want nothing to do with evil at all. They don't want to even talk to evil, see evil, have evil come around them. Evil has to make a choice to become good before it can even be around good, right? That's good's whole principle. Then you got evil over here. Evil says, and I just do not want to be good. I'm strictly material. I, all that ethereal stuff doesn't even make any sense to me. All I want is what I can see right here and right now, and it feels good. Why? The good is like, man, we're looking for things to come. We're not even trying to enjoy anything here on this physical reality. There's nothing here for us. We're waiting on our Lord. And then as when you're now here on the middle watching these two, you realize that they're actually dealing with the same Lord. And that's why his symbol is like this. It's a crescent. That crescent is a scythe. It cuts. <laughs> it cuts the connection from the understanding that all is self, that these are just two sides of the brain. Both of these two need to shut up. <laughs> this is what I do in my body. I, none of I allow them to present their information. Once you come into your body and you start mastering your body, it doesn't come at you with the BS, literally the bullshit anymore. <laughs> it comes with a balance level. But remember, your body, mind, and soul is talking to you. This is what I was trying to get out <laughs> on a Bob Tuscan show, but I think I should have came with some rudimentary, very basic stuff. But your body talks. But you have more than one body, <laughs> just like there's more than one God. There's more than one God because there's more than one human. <laughs> In concepts of what God is, because everyone has a different name for God, God is just another device of being equated based on numbers, and that's why all the names of God, they even say 72 names of God. Hmm, you need to understand what these people are saying. You need to see that what this whole dimension is about it's a massive lesson. If you can get that lesson, it's the greatest reward. But remember this, the universe is can use you anyway. Meaning that even in the state that you're in now as the birth to something and continuously birthing things, even when you have ideas, you're birthing something new. The universe can use you. Now, if you want to steer the tornado, as Dan talks about, meaning this huge tor toric field that you're in is still scheduled to enter into the next black hole in the lifespan on most humans in 72 years. It will go to the black hole by default, meaning that the, the, it, the body, mind, soul, and all these, the DNA, et cetera, longs for new experience. So once it feels like it's not getting the experience that it needs, it starts working its way towards the exit <laughs> so that it can pop out somewhere else. And this is why when you're happy and you're full of joy and you, and you have great things to live for, you tend, tend to live a longer or even a fuller life in many tenses. It's like you don't age the same way. You always feel young inside. And it's because you're not trying to leave. I leave when it's time for me to go. I'm here for the lesson. And now you move into self-substantiation, you start actually giving the lesson. So, and then learning from the responses that are coming from what you're teaching. We all do this, but what are we choosing to give to our brothers and our sisters on this planet who are the same as us, two arms, two legs, and a head, five base vehicle, except that many 
of us are in soul groups that have been through different experiences. Some of us are blended hybrids with, you know, some type of uh, 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 experience from, from uh, Mesoamerican, another experience from, from, uh, from Arabia, another experience, all these mixes. But see, even that mixture has governed that more souls can incarnate. And let me explain this. Let's say, for instance, you run, uh, uh, excuse me, you run Chinese version <laughs> 9.9. You're over. You can no longer be Chinese. <laughs> and then you've actually run through all the uh, many of the other races. What's next? Well, if you still haven't learned your lesson of the version of Scion that you're in, <laughs> then you're going to need to go again to some type of mixture. So they say, okay, okay, universe is creative at this. We'll take Chinese. And then you know what? I think if he's this time German, and Chinese, he'll get it. German and Chinese, let's do it. So, Chinese mother, German father come together, boom. The vessel sees the dock. I mean, meaning that the ship sees the light. Your body is the spaceship. It sees the light, so it knows, oh wait, the Chinese German incarnation is the one that I'm going to need to finish off my lesson. Now, remember, the universities of this world are modeled after the universe. <laughs> anyway, so it's modeled after the universe because obviously the universe is even in here, okay? So in a universe or a university, you need to get enough credits to go to another class, to graduate, etc. So some people would think the earth is not even about this. I mean, that's not even what earth is about. Earth's not about teaching us anything. <laughs> earth, that's all this universe seems to be interested in doing is teaching us how to become it, which is what? Us. So the only thing that knowledge should really incorporate is teaching you how to be you. So now anything that is trying to teach you, you can determine then that anything that is trying to teach you how to become something else, which is pretty much all the knowledge in this world, this world has gone already off the path. All they want to do is teach about you can be like Madonna, you can be like Lady Gaga, you can be like Bob, uh, 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 um, who knows, Bob Big Boy. <laughs> you can be something else beside who you really are. That's all they have to introduce. And so today I introduce to you the massive level of information that allow you to take every single experience that you're having in life and to see exactly how it connects to you. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brief break and I'm going to look over my notes. And, uh, but I'm mainly going to look over the chat box because I really wrapped this up here. This is, again, pre-show. When I come in with season two, episode one, it won't be this, this board, rudimentary board. It will be all the diagrams, all the videos, all the correspondences, all the entities and everyone and them with their hands in the cookie jar. Like, obviously, a huge soul group is the Jehovah soul group, right? You got them hanging around. Then you got these Luciferians. Right? Luciferian soul group, right? Then you got Masons. Now remember, now that you understand soul groups, then you understand what Masonry it really is. It's a soul group that they, they want to induct you and put you into the ancient order of let's go in a circle. That's why they, they even use the symbolism. I'm going to induct you into the order of a circle. <laughs> Never going beyond, but remaining here, right? So you see these soul groups that are going on, and then you also see certain soul groups, they're almost gone. This is like an extinct animal. They're on to another timeline or something like that because there's not too many of them left here, like the dodo bird. So what happens is, is that you need to start seeing that the people that are around you, there was a promise that was made, and that promise was made by you, that if you ever see another part of you that had not yet come into full realization, you will help it because you realize that it was only a seed. This is something that moved me into the greatest levels of compassion even recently, is that I remembered the promise. And that's why I was walking actually through here and through the woods, and it just came to my mind, and it said, yeah, James Kukulkan did never return. <laughs> His children did, though, meaning that 
all the people that you see around here, because I saw this one man, and he looked just like he was right out of the, the, uh, the Mayan painting. But he was just selling some, uh, some chargers for phones. And I looked at him, and I said, man, he looks just like the Kuko Kan picture or in the, uh, in the other gods that were around there, the seven brothers. And he said, he is, though. But what happened is, is that he's no longer in his center. He's on one part of who he really is. And only until you come into your center could you actually see what you really are. And not before then, because it's nothing to do with just seeing, it's actually experiencing. And this is what I was saying, that some people... Just because you take ayahuasca doesn't mean you're a shaman. <laughs> Just because you, you, you've taken some uh, or have read um, the Enochian tablets doesn't make you a time lord. You see what I mean? It's an experience thing. So until the person has experience, because why? The experience changes the DNA. Okay? So experience, why would experience change the DNA? I probably spelled every word wrong on the board. They'd be like, I don't know how he could be in etymology. He keeps spelling words wrong. It's because they're all the same words. Like, I don't even see words like this anymore. Like, I see words like this. I, th I drop all the vowels. The vowels, like, mean nothing to me. <laughs> and that's why most, all my words are spelled right if you drop the vowels. <laughs> so what happens is, is that the experience changes the DNA. Why? Have you ever been in one of those situations where it's just shocking to you? Like, whatever is being revealed to you, it's changing your life. That way you feel, which cannot be recorded as the same as any other time, is recorded by your DNA as a different moment, and it sets a milestone or a marker there. It, it marks and tags that frequency, and then right then, that DNA... Of that, of that particular frequency is able to be replicated as long as you can access it. And this is why you have to have a powered up system. Because if you had a powered up system, it would feel like the moment that you went into the greatest excitement, whether it was you get, got a car or whatever, you would be able to continuously access that moment because you have the energy to go back to that point. Now, this energy is very simple. It's just like if you're sitting down on the couch and you're tired, you're not going to start reminiscing about 10 years ago when you were on the swing with, you see what I mean? You're not going to go into that. You're going to be like right there. I got to go to work tomorrow. You see what I mean? So having the energy that's necessary is what is key because you have to have that energy in order to, to break through time, to access all moments of time and space, to realize who you are so that you can sit into that, become seated in your soul and present, right? So you, as you become present and you're now actually in your vehicle, then you can act from there. You're not this divided split ray of seven colors. You're actually moving in and out of it as if you're, you're understanding that this is to generate energy, not for you to sit around in one of these steps on the ladder and playing like you're something that you're really not, because you're everything. Anytime you choose to be one thing, you're giving the rest of yourself injustice. Even time you say, this is me, this is how I am, I don't like them. You have to get to a point where you're able to absorb everything and be able to extract from it what is the lesson for you. Because nothing that is happening to you is just haphazard and just random, any of that. It just, it's based on how much you're in realization of what is going on around you. So again, we're going to take a brief moment here. And then we're going to come forward. Let me see if I can get us a, some type of whole video. I didn't actually load anything in the banks this morning. So let me see what's, uh, what's here, just so that there'll be something playing. I wish I had one of those great videos from Wes. Let's see here. But I'm pretty sure everyone is getting the, uh, the idea. And of course, if you didn't, then feel free to fill the chat box with questions now. And um, if, if you could do me a favor and just put question in quotes before it, that will help me out to determine, uh, to not have to read through everything and know exactly where your question is. So give me a moment here and I'm going to see what exactly is in the feed so that way we can get some images or something going on while we take this uh, brief break, allow people to ponder what has been said and really, really see if this is something that makes sense to them. So looks like we have some videos in the banks here, 
It doesn't look like anything uh, specific, so you may see anything. looks like just a bunch of clips from different things that we've done. So I'm going to go ahead and just play one now and uh, let it run, and then I'm going to go ahead and refresh on myself. I'm going to come forward and I'm going to answer some questions, and then we're going to go ahead and end today's show. I'm definitely looking forward to, of course, season two. We actually have everyone arriving here that's going to be in that first AstroQuest crew on the 24th, so I'm super excited about that. I'm actually setting up the studio now. It's quite complex because we're going to be bringing in a fully active experience from everywhere, from you seeing people working to seeing what's going on in other rooms of, uh, of what we set up here with different experiments. And uh, we're going to, of course, have one room that's completely dedicated to sound. We're going to get the green screen up. We're going to need a lot of things going on. But right now, it's being hooked up. But because of the complexity of the system in itself, it's taken me just a little bit of time to secure the proper equipment and to get it hooked up properly. But hey, you build it piece by piece in self-substantiation, but you enjoy it more because you know where everything is. Like right now, I'm going to do some tutorials about how many different components Later on, I'm going to do some, some tutorials in the future about how many different components that have been bolted on to this entire uh, expansion of the resistance to get it to work. And I know all those components, though. So <laughs> it's like this. What self-substantiation is, is that let's take the, a Ferrari. This is a good metaphor. Driving a Ferrari and building a Ferrari is two different things. When you understand how to build a Ferrari, your mind is completely different. A rapper can drive a Ferrari, but can he build one or can she build one? No. So the complexity of a person's mind that knows how to actually build something versus mind, body, and soul, excuse me, versus the one who is just enjoying it is totally different. So self-substantiation is about never getting comfortable with letting something or someone else always give to you secondhand experiences. Hey, this is what happened. It's about you understanding how to do it yourself. That's why the breathing is a big thing. Some people don't feel like it's necessary for them to breathe. They take about 10 or 15% of the oxygen in their body the body really should have. So the body breathes shallow because no, you, can't, uh, it, you have to get to the point where you say, <sighs> because for so long, you've just been like, And also, when you're scared or nervous or, or, or frustrated, you breathe even less. So you need to see that one versus the other, one equals expansion, the other one equals contraction. So if you're always contracting sm small breaths rather than deep, expansive breaths, it's in that right there. So you can take this template of exactly how to look at your body Look at the world, look at nature, look at also the synthetics, look at the planet, the external worlds, look at the moon, and look at the symbols, and then start adding it all up for yourself, and then you'll start figuring out why it is that you may be having trouble in certain areas, success in other areas, why certain people said this means this and that means that, why they were even confused. You get all of that, but you only get it when you get actually into the mission itself. But what is the mission? You. So where are you going? Inside. We coined the term inner stand. You're going inside to make a stand. Your spine should be erect. Then you should climb your spine. And as you're moving through your spine, you're going to face different challenges. Here it may be about your courage or your ability to resist urges, excuse me, is here. Why here it may be about your compassion and actually your ability to actually be able to tap in and assist others. So as you continue to move throughout your system, you learn things. And guess what? The only actual energy cycle that is taking place that is the real one is when you go into the top level of your senses and who you are, you stand, down up, uh, stand, stand up upon everything and you see that everything is collected into you, just as you see with these, the triangles shine a light back into it. And then you then spread out again, spreading these seeds. And that's why Egyptians looked at light as seeds into the actual world. These are your ideas, your children, all the things that you're producing, even things that you're training and how it turns out, back into the world for you to actually be there and be responsible for how things turn out. Because I think that was the last message that Kuko Khan left on those golden plates was, I'll be back. And the reason why, which I'll definitely give the credit to Dan Winter for figuring it out, but he had talked to some people in Hungary, 
that these kind of entities left is that they said that our son was no longer allowing, that they were foreseeing that the son was no longer allowing for the female of their species to continue to ovulate properly. Meaning that something was going on with the celestial mechanics that wasn't allowing children to, that were expanded to keep coming out. Now, whether that's Merck and Pfizer, or whether that's uh, um, some grand celestial body that we can't even see, to me, it doesn't even matter. We have to build the bridge of communication throughout the entire network of what we're calling the universe, so that way the children on this planet get the full experience of what it is to be a human, not a prisoner of war, not a slave, not all this other stuff that this society is designed. And I am here personally to make sure that that is carried out because I've already climbed the ladder and back down again, back up, back down again, back up, back down again, and I'll keep doing it until the mission itself is fulfilled. And so the more people that we actually have expanding into this, humans become orgon, or basically they generate the proper DNA that is necessary to correct what you would call retarded, deformed, crazy, deranged, and psycho, is the responsibility that everyone keeps leaving behind that we easily come in to start to assist. So why, again, we're so busy kicking all these people down, like I said before, weak people can't pick you up anyway, so they love to kick you down. When are we gonna get one that's strong enough that says, look, I can solve this, I see what's going on, and in many aspects, you also have to see that to be a teacher, you have to go through it. That's what this whole conversation was about. So substantiation is about the experience. So when you're talking about giving someone instruction, you already said, I signed up for the experience. Many of the things that I had happened to me in this path, especially when I began to start talking to individuals, was because I needed to know what it felt like, felt like to be in situations that individuals were gonna later on be in and come to me and ask me what to do. But guess what? that's when you're able to give the person the right answer and you're not just saying, man, I know how you feel when you haven't even been through nothing they've been through. I've been through what you've been through and I'm here still intact. So there are others of us that are not intact. There are people still in the crazy house that need to be pulled back. They are lost in the dimensions. There's other people in, in betwixt, as they say, betwixt dimensions. They left here. They don't know how to get back. Their light is not emanating properly. They need assistance. They need the galactic tow truck. So when is humanity going to step up with magnetic posters and oscillators and prisms, high-powered lasers of light, full essence inside of the heart emitting the positive vibrations, the tones and mantras, the vibrations that equally activate the body, the pure solfeggio within the music, shot and flat, lossless, pushed across organic devices? <laughs> Get on board, meaning that, hey, let's... I don't know what took them so long. At this point, to me, sometimes I'd be like, man, it seemed like somebody really old should have figured this out. Like, I'm over here, like, I'm just using the standard knowledge. Like, I didn't even graduate high school. I went to, I had, did all the homework for 12th grade, and they would never let me go to 12th grade because I was still 15. By the time I turned 16, I was already in the street, so I never got my diploma. I had to get it later on. So if they're telling you that it's this fake university, uh, uh, what is that, compartmentalized knowledge that is necessary in order for you to get ahead in the world, that's because that's their determination of what it is to be ahead. <laughs> Success is based on the individuals that you're dealing with and what they, appear, what they think is the highest possible attainment. So when you're dealing with individuals such as myself that actually have tapped into the limitless, limited questions at times do get somewhat of a, a, a very... Uh, 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 condensed answer in a sense because these days if you're really looking into the information that's being presented by the resistance you expand beyond what we said in day one and then who of us is not learning that's the other thing does has anyone stepped up that knew all this from the beginning and there's nothing else that they need to know the people that have nothing else that they need to know are not here when there's nothing else that you need to know, you pass out of this, you die. But guess what? Before you get to more than you need to know, there is so much. And you could just grasp just a little bit of that, again, with the etymology, the chemicals, substances, and all different things that are presented on the planet. So let me go ahead and run that, and then I'm going to go ahead and take a look at these questions, come back and ask those questions, and then I'm going to let everyone get on with their wonderful day. Okay. Yeah, that look on that girl's face is about how I looked. I mean, obviously, again, you have a, a very deep misunderstanding of 
what symbolism means being carried out here on the planet. So I have a couple questions here, and I'm going to go ahead and answer those questions, and then we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and uh, close out on today's show. I will tell everyone what happened with this uh, live stream is that if it's not on, it doesn't actually record the questions until you log on. So I did just log on, and I saw one question here. It says, was Saturn originally referred to as soul? And um, generally, words that have S's on them always refer to the Saturnalian system. That's why there's S's, because uh, Sa itself, also known as cedar, uh, even the cedar tree, um, and also um, cedar, I think it's cedar like that, was Saturn. Now, to understand these planets is to see that, uh, I think it's the, the book you're looking for is Velikovsky's Worlds in Collision. And what it shows is that just like you have this, uh, this ziggurat, and obviously these would be different colors, these became known as the pillars of life. Obviously, a pyramid is the same thing. These are known as the pillars of life. And the reason is because generally if you look, especially on the American dollar bill, we talked about this a week before, you'll see there's bricks. Check my son here. Yeah. You'll see there's bricks in this, and these bricks, of course, are the building blocks or the pieces that it takes to create an entire body. Sometimes they put the eye on top here, right? And then we talk about how this whole thing is just really a body with eyes on top. And that all these building blocks that are here are heart, liver, spleen, kidney, endocrine glands, pineal gland, etc. And those are all the building blocks that it takes to make one complete structure, one complete living, functioning, uh, microcosmic world. Um, and so what you have with Saturn, Saturn was always known as the base pillar, which is the color black, and it meant the foundation of the beginning. Now, if you look at Velikovsky's collisions, you'll see that none of these characters, none of these are like human beings. That's what people are not getting. They're not, they give these gods like faces and beards, and they make them look like Santa Claus and all that. All these are explaining is different segments of time that we've gone into before we actually got to a, a point where there were shields around the planet, vegetation growing, oxygen, and all these kind of things. Before then, you had first just the extreme ball of fire. Then you had an extreme cooling point. And then you had a, a, a addition of water, a complete deluge point. And so, and then steam, and then the actual creation of the vapor clouds. The vapor clouds then holding back different essences of lights that are responsible for creating certain types of generation. Thus, those generations stopping while other ones begin. And then this continuing until the point where an entire structure, now obviously all this happened so fast in the tense of the, uh, the first emanation that there's a quickness about how fast the world can be started and developed. But if you want to see it in slow motion, you'll start seeing planets also as wounds themselves, but also as um, emanate, not only as wounds themselves, but also as emanations, just like a woman is also an emanation. She has a planet in her. She can bring forth the seed. She's even in a, a, a microcosmic, micro, macrocosmic tree, or excuse me, microcosmic tree to many degrees, even man. But again, what you have is when you're looking at specific symbolism, you generally, like planetary symbols, you're generally related to stages. So it would be, it wouldn't be odd to hypothesize that in the base pillar that a certain type of creation lives here. Markers. Meaning more of an instinctual, um, all of the things that you get through instinct, meaning the things that you have to go on for things to actually occur, right? and things for, to think for more to get built, right? This is the foundation. So, then, when you move into the next pillar, it's almost like if you looked at it. Excuse me. If you looked at it like this, this is a very easy way to to see how it works. Metaphors and designs, people, not actual entities. Like, oh, Saturnians! <laughs> Man, they have us running around here scared of our own tail, literally. 
They got everyone running around scared of Kundalini because we've created so much negativity in the past. They wonder if the negativity is just going to come all out at one time. Base pillar, okay? Let's say this is that base Saturnalian pillar. We're just going to use three colors here. Mm hmm. And mm hmm. Okay, some people know this exactly, by the way. They, they're hearing complete the template. They're like, this is Saturn, and this is Mars, and this is Venus. But I'm not even going that far because it's not necessary. This is what happens. When you graduate base pillar instinctual levels, and there's animals that correspond to this too, by the way. That's why a lot of the Saturnalian animals are chthonic or nighttime animals. They, they're lesser light animals, and I'll explain why. Because we have to get up here to, like, obviously there being some kind of type of light source up here, and I'll explain that in a minute. So this is shining down into the prism, by the way. That's the easiest way to understand, understand it. And so what happens with this base pillar when the, entity, the entities that move into this, or the energies that move into this next pillar are actually minus this. Uh -huh. that, that's shed off, it's been refined. It's like building a sculpture. You kind of shed the, the fat and the weight. Then to move into the next pillar, this goes, okay? Now, originally there's always an argument about whether we came from the bottom up or we came from the top down. And this is the, the big argument. <laughs> like, this is the difference between Eastern and Western tradition. Eastern tradition believes that we came from basically hell. From the ground up, we, we built this body. Why some believe that we were already enlightened and that we descended into these spheres and we lost abilities as we went down through the spheres as we became more dense. We moved further away from the soul or the source of original self because the soul is, of course, solo, meaning one, all collected. Okay? So the answer is, as we come to the conclusion of the week, it was both because... Realistically, every single experience is going us into the first original thing, but, but there's no first. So all this stuff is going on simultaneously. It's a little bit further out of our understanding. We don't have the processes to compute how that's possible, but it's possible. Both of them met each at the same point and coalesced together. And so you have probably energies that were more present during this part in their consciousness than this part. So that's how they recall it this way. While you have other energies that were more present during this part, so they recall it that way. And this becomes the two hemispheres of the world, sitting back like the good and the bad that I was telling you about earlier, saying, hey, we're not going to come over there. But guess what? Even in Costa Rica, we're sitting on the equator, meaning that we're sitting in the equilibrium. So, of course, as this continues to grow up, I'll do another pillar here. I'll do another pillar here. Mm -hmm. And then another pillar here. And you can obviously see what happens that there's a shedding here, then there's another shedding here, <laughs> and then finally, you know, you're into this totality, because all this is really is these experiences, actually, this wasn't, <laughs> some people think that this is like the worst thing that could ever happen to them, I'm telling you, this was PlayStation. This was exactly what we signed up to do, was to go into these different experiences in full consciousness and actually begin to create with the actual en entities and energies that were there. How do you think we got to duckbill platypus? How do you think we got to uh, uh, different kinds of ants, different kinds of birds? Someone was saying, and someone was not just saying, but looking at the genetics looking at different things and saying, let me add this to this. Just like a person will sit down in front of a computer and, and, and try to map out a three-dimensional environment and say, okay, we're going to make it fall, and we're going to bring this creature in with this particular appendage, and we're going to do this. But guess what? That's synthetic. <laughs> That's fake. The ancients were really doing it. Like, they were living the dream. <laughs> Not this crazy stuff that's going on right now, this fake shadow world, the shade. Because here's what was also created. Now, if you want something to lean on to and say that, oh, this is authentic, then you have this system. But then what was created to make sure that there wasn't even a fraction, only or maybe just a fraction of individuals that were recalled, that this is how and the purpose of what this kind of symbol really meant, they created an external version. Because remember, this is a template that is to be kept in your mind. An external version, also known as the inverted pyramid, also would basically be an inverted ziggurat, 
or basically when this thing is casting a shadow, there would be then, if you had seven here, seven levels of a an inverted duplicate of this. So and just as there are human beings and animals and entities and things populating these worlds, they also have, and some people will be surprised about this now, but a shadow. <laughs> here, especially if the person identified more with a shadow world, a shadow on the same corresponding pillar of the, sh the basically the, uh, the reflective world. And the reason why is that we're light. Light sends a reflection. So just because you can't see it, it just means you're not quick enough. But what happens is, is that we have these other correspondences, and sometimes we can see ourselves as the one down here, or we can see ourselves as the oversoul up here talking to the one down here, saying, hey, man, you're in illusion. <laughs> that one down there you're in doesn't really exist. They actually created that a long time ago. It was like a demo, and it was a place where we can basically test out things before we put them in real life. You know, that's enough on that. Let me look in here. See what else we got. All right, so that gets the Saturn question answered. Someone wants to know what 1111 is, okay? Now look, 11 is a door, okay? And this is why. One, two, three. That's a triangulation. Now we got all the three components that's needed. So, again, father, mother, child, right? But things don't end there. The next point is created. We'll call this four, or the door. Now, obviously four and door rhyme. But what the door is about is the door is basically for you to enter. It's called Daleth. In Hebrew, also Daleth corresponds to a door. So this door is basically the gateway to the next experience. And that's why they call this four dimension not a real plane. That is like an elevator shaft <laughs> where you get in there and you come out where you want. It's not, it's just basically a, through, a throughput. And so when you see 1111, you're seeing a trigger or code that's opening a door. Now, what door is not going to be able to be defined here? Meaning that when, when they're using these electronic codes that trigger a person's mind, that's all based on what this individual is being exposed and exposing themselves to which I can't tell because I'm not standing there looking at you and figuring out how you're engaging in your life. And so that's what becomes important about uh, being subject to hive mind control because obviously 1111 is a hive mind number. Everyone started seeing it all of a sudden and then pretty soon once you set your mind to see it, the mind has a biological clock. So it will actually see it. Let me check on the battery power here so we don't lo lose our HD recording. Great. But, um, the body has a biological clock, so if you say at one point, well, there's 1111, it's 1111. Some people are waiting, when they first started this, it'd be 1109, they're waiting for 1111. So they can text, it's 1111. And they start playing around with the 1111 a lot, right? And it becomes just like any of these other occult symbols, start playing around with them a lot, you start seeing them everywhere. Because the body becomes tuned to that harmonic, that frequency, that symbol, that integer, whatever, right? Now, this is a dualistic number. This gives us 22, right? And 2 plus 2 equals 4, right? Now, why is the dual number seen as a door? Because of interference. Interference is communication, the same as copulation. It's, it's the same reason why one sexual organ goes into another. That interference or intervening breeds something. So in a sense, it is a door to the next stage of consciousness. But that interference can only be determined by the, the, the person who's being interfered with. But remember, everything that you're taking in from your, in your eyes is, is somewhat of intrusive. And we're not saying whether these are positive or negative. We don't have to get that deep into explanation. But when you see, especially a straight line, a word, or symbol, or something, it is now intruded. There is now an interference. And what must come from that interference is a birth of something. So if I'm in a room with a certain kind of individual, there is still, there's going to be something that changes about me when I leave that room. I'm never going to be the same as when I walked into that room. So hopefully uh, that makes a lot of sense about the door. 
and about how that became a time code, especially for 2012, because a lot of people saw 2012 as their gateway to expanding their consciousness. And that was the entire idea that was being sold about 2012, is that you could expand, you could go to, into a different state of consciousness, et cetera, et cetera. Let me look here. All right. The next question here is, Destroying the ego and letting go of control. Is it possible that by letting go, you're letting other entities inside guide you? Now, let's talk about the difference here between letting go and basically, um, I'm going to use the exact terms here. Let me erase my board. But let's talk about the difference between when a person is letting go of this whole idea of who they are, this fake loaded program, versus opening up themselves to anything that the universe may have for them. You know, there's this whole idea that people say, oh, just open yourself up and don't even worry about it. There's already stuff to be concerned about here. It doesn't have to be a person's focal point for their entire day, but you better stay on your guard and be quick. The reality is, is that what we're talking about with ego, because a lot of people throw out this term, and they say, oh, you need to let go of your ego, you need to let go of your ego, and they just use it because they keep hearing in these Eastern books talking about the ego, even though they don't understand the ego the way that the Eastern teachings understood the ego. They haven't got to that part of the book yet. They just think to say, oh, you let go of your ego, and then they heard that so many places that they think that that's the right thing to say. Right? What is the ego? The ego itself is wholly comprised of what you built up until this point in this physicality. Okay? So, of course, if you've lived this life of basically total, what you would believe is total misunderstanding, and that's why, again, I'm not, I'm not one of those individuals that are so uh, uh, sold on this letting go of the ego idea, because of when you look at the definition of the ego, it doesn't look like something that can actually be let go of. It looks that to me as something that can actually be trained. And as I talked about in the Code of the Matrix, you're probably going to need to train your ego, which is like a beast, Flip it over and ride that thing out of here because it has been trained to endure. So all of what you've been dealing with in your life, the, the, every time something says, oh, you should do this and oh, you should do that, that, yeah, that may be the ego speaking based on its past experience, but what happens if the ego comes into a full realization of its part in all of this and how it's connected to all of this? Then is the ego this thing that needs to be gotten rid of then? Is it possible to get rid of anything when you're everything? So what I actually believe is, is that all you have to do is take it piece by piece. You, doing too much thinking about, am I getting rid of my ego? Is that an egotistic comment or whatever? Is not even at the control point. What happens is if you find yourself in action, carrying out daily with yourself at least and with others, things that are expansive, then everything, ego, devil, Lucifer, Mars, Internet, everything is being used to become a bridge to get the entire species into another level of consciousness. So what I'm talking about is, is I'm talking about instead of us always trying to get rid of something, let's figure out how to actually shape it up so that it can do what it's capable of doing. So again, I see that if you use the term, the term egotistic goal, it actually means a certain attitude. But if you use the word ego, it actually means the actual energy that has been designed based on your experiences in this life. So, again, if you're out somewhere, you're in nature, and you're constantly absorbing the, the real intellect and the real uh, essence of what is actually here, then all of your experiences will still be going with you. So let's get that, uh, let's get that straight. And again, the terminology is where we're getting caught up at because the egotism and the ego have two different types of de definitions. So it's basically about shaping these bodies up. Here's another question. Person says, are non-dual harmonics per peer the latter transferable or are they completely organic? Are non-dual harmonics transferable or are they completely organic? Non-dual harmonics. Okay. Let's talk about just harmonics in general. What, what harmonics is, 
Let's, let's say you have something on, let's just say 7 hertz, or some people don't think I'm getting crazy with the numbers, 17 hertz, okay? And then you have something else at 32 hertz. There's a harmonic point in between these two. Okay? And now, if you would look at these as two separate energies, someone is going to have to make the trip. 17 is going to have to come up, and 32 are going to come, have to come down in order to become harmonic, or to discover the harmonic between these two components. So what happens is, is that it may, as, as 17 is coming up, it no longer is 17 anymore. And as 32 is coming down, it no longer is 32. It, these both are becoming the harmonic. So the harmonic, if you were trying to do it in numbers, you would just find the center point between 17 and 32. But because this kind of stuff is not based on inorganic numbers, it's really just a different space altogether. So this harmonic point gets you out of these two, what would then be dual numbers, or the two integer numbers, right? And it gets you into another space that is actually not a number at all. And that's got to, and you know, you have to think about that for a minute, but so basically this is like two things laying on the ground and this is like up in the air. Okay? So when you move into the harmonic space, harmony is its own frequency. And this is what I was trying to tell people uh, before about how to get into this expansive state of consciousness and, and interface with expansion and all the knowledge and information and the application and all that, that whole wavelength is a harmonic wavelength. And the harmony can be found based on you actually basically go doing this exact same thing that we explained. Understanding the middle point in your consciousness. And in that, in that tense, you more rise up versus going either to the left, to the right, or uh, um, this is a spatial thing, so I need to kind of draw some diagrams. But again, you're more rising up into harmonics, while two fixed integers are more like on the ground. So that's as much as explanation I can, can really give on that one. Uh, a person is asking, let me see, all emotional feelings are gone. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, these questions are coming in faster. <laughs> Next question is, is, and as they come in, they, they're being moved down. So, could elf wave be to blame for some of this craziness, mass shortage, and things that sort? Okay, let's talk about the craziness, the psychosis. The psychosis is, is coming from the moon. See, what happens is, is that the reason why I say it's coming from the moon is it's not just particularly the celestial body known as the moon that's causing issues, it is the seeds that the moon is putting out that are causing the issues. Why? Let me show you. Let me take some of my role, sorry about <laughs> You Let's say you have this guy, right? And all he thinks about is girls. And the girls that he likes, like money. Okay? So now, for him to get those girls, he must have money. Okay? Now, money is named the way that it is for a reason. Money is really moon... And the E is the energy sign, just like that's the, the, this is the energy sign, okay? The trident is the energy sign, okay? So, but a certain kind of energy, right? So, this is moon energy, is money, okay? So then he can go and do all the stuff that he wants to do with his fascination with his woman. But where do those urges come from? So when you say the ancient knowledge, what it says is that the urges to actually go and reproduce come from the moon. That's why all the farmers are planting their crops and things like that during, it depends on if they're planting a root crop versus planting one that's growing out, which you can extract some knowledge from that. But whether you're, depending on whether you're planting a root or if you're planting a, a crop that's growing above ground, you would be dealing with the moon energy. So now, let's say that this individual who just needs this moon energy is willing to open up a nuclear power plant to get it. <laughs> because that's how much money they need. Or a strip club. Because that's how much money they need. Or a, a, a bar, right? Or 
a place that sells alcohol. So all of these different places that we're seeing in the world are coming because different people have urges to fulfill things that are associated with moon, the moon energy, whether it's reproduction, do dominion, remember this is a lord, um, fertility, abundance. You see what I mean? So anytime a person is getting caught up in these dynamics, what they're trying to do is they're just trying to take a part of how much there, really, there is here, which is really limitless. But the only thing they're focused on is this lunar energy. Now, of course, Luna gives us lunatic. So the lunatic is a person that's crazy, a person that's psycho, because what happens is, is that each of your experiences that you're having in life, as we talked about earlier, change your DNA. See, it's not only spirit, every experience can be seen as spiritual, okay? Because it's gonna affect your spirit in some way or another. But, so it's not about a positive and negative thing, but every experience changes DNA. So when you're having too many lunar experiences, is it wrong for you to become a lunatic? Not at all. So that should explain to you about that. Let's see here. The next question is, also again, uh, just to, also to finish off the question, an elf, an elf wave, extremely low frequency, is utilized to lower energies and things of that nature. To, but to start itemizing what elf waves can really do, you'd be better off going right to the control point of who would even be using an elf wave, which is understanding the, the moon state of mind of control, like I said, the governor, the lord, the jealous one, all those different lower, lower traits. And then you'll actually be able to crack into how to, to change the frequency of your body and then the harmonic low elf waves, Saturnalian waves, cannot really affect you. They just, they don't touch you, you're basically too quick. So let's see, the next question here is, somebody says what happened, the question is, what happened to my vision? Why do I think something has happened to it? Again, when we're watching, when we're watching more than we're participating, there will always be this kind of drawback. Like everyone needs to see now that a lot of that's been given is instructions on how to do certain things. But you have to ask yourself, how much of it have I really applied? Because what we're really dealing with here, like again, like what I talked about earlier about ego, when you're always talking about letting something go or getting rid of something, you basically are just putting it away from you but never really figuring out what it exactly is. So you'll be returning to it at some point. That's what I meant earlier about the ego. Anything that you put away, you discard, and you never really understood, you will have to end up coming back to it to fully comprehend it, understand it, put it in its place, become responsible for it, and then go to the next level. So just like with the cleanse, uh, you're already living in a world that some people are not even able to use the internet. So of course, in the self-substantiation conversation, there's gonna be things that are mentioned that other individuals cannot do. There are people right now that cannot even listen to what I'm saying because they can't understand what I'm talking about because they don't speak English. So this whole idea, again, that we're all the same is the farce. What happens is that you have to take yourself from the level that you're on now, assess what is really happening, and then go back within. But when you go inside, if you're going into a body that has that you'll put things in your mouth that kill your body. If you, if anyone on this line will put things in their mind, their body, their mind, or soul that will kill it, you already still have room to grow. And because all of us engage in some practice or another that does that, you can see the room for our growth. But when you really talk about growing, when you talk about reincarnating, when, you, when you're actually gonna do it, excuse me, talking is one thing, when you have to really do it, that's the motivation. Like the ancestors were motivated to figure out incarnation because if they did it, they wouldn't be coming back. That same burden is not on us. Or is it? Because that's the thing. Is the more that you can take on as your responsibility, some people see responsibilities as burdens, the more stronger you can actually become. 
So we see that there's a now a new mission in front of us where the ancestors had already accomplished basically getting us back and forth into these dimensions. Now people are saying, yeah, we're getting back, but I'm tired. I want to get something else. I want to expand into something else. Well, then that's your duty then. Like, don't put it on to somebody else and say, oh, it's your responsibility to do it, or you're not even doing it right, or you're not even explaining it right, and then you be back there talking like a talking head. Go and do something. And so that's where all of us have to see that there's, there's a demarcation that's being drawn here, like this, a line, that is being drawn again within humanity's experience to encourage them to stop being so fake. Meaning, sitting back judging people all the time, you're, you've done nothing. You've accomplished nothing. You have to get out there and go and see why you were even judging that person that way. Because you were in the middle of trying to experience something that you want to say that you're done already with. See, most people, they just want to be done. I graduated. I don't think that's why I'm here. <laughs> then how much of this expansiveness have you ever really seen? How fast can you get it to happen? Can you do it on cue? Have you even figured out about the archons? Do you see these essences and urges and energies moving around here? Have they ever attacked you? Have you talked to them? <laughs> you see, like there's all these other things that when you may ask one individual person, especially if telling the truth, they'll say, no, I've read about it, I've heard about it, but I'm not in some experience in myself. But I'll tell you what, it's because you're not motivated to do it. It's not because it doesn't exist. And that's what everyone's going to realize at a certain point. All the spirituality that we're talking, it really exists. But if you're still back debating about whether that's really true or not, you're in the wrong point. You need to actually go in and experience it. But where, excuse me, where are you going? Inside. So what does that accompany? It accompanies fixing at least the control point, which is your physicality. But here's the interesting thing. Many people can do as much work as they want on their mind, I mean their body, but it's their mind. The, the body is only the first part. Now, the body, especially if your body identified, is going to be the primary point. You're not even going to be able to work on your mind, and you may be able to work on your spirit, especially if you have a really good spirit guide, but trying to come through your mind when your body is already destroyed, it's not going to happen because the body becomes the filter for what your mind is perceiving. So just like if you drink some hot sauce and your stomach gets upset, you will be more angry at people. Watch how it works. The next question here is, um, actually, I don't think there's any more questions tagged as questions. OK. There's a lot of um, comments here, but none of them seem to have questions questions attached to them. As I said to everyone, if you have a question, it's great to put question uh, in front of it. Here it is. Uh, here's a question. But that allows me to see it, because in the chat box, obviously, there's the thousands of comments. So this question says, is the sky the same as a greater than, less than sign? I would say definitely any divisive symbol that is indicating one is greater than the other would serve the same process. And that's why they say when God says that is the only God, or that when, um, when, um, it's basically the, the, the division process that you are chosen. This means that other ones are not chosen. This is the divisive process. The, base, the easiest way to see it is also division has its purposes. Division is the process that takes place before the third component is born. You see? But the reality is, is that when you are experiencing it versus understanding it, understanding is two different things. If someone's causing division in your life, this means that there's a next level that's going to come after that division. But most people have already identified the divisive state does burn a lot of energy. So when you're moving into states of, uh, of, of energy uh, conservation, you can eliminate a lot of unnecessary division by actually understanding what is really going on. Because when we look at something, once again, whether it be eagle, whether it be dra dracons, whether it be uh, uh, cobra, who cares what it is, if we look at it and then we immediately judge, we didn't understand. Because if you really understand, then you actually see that, oh, this is a, another variation of self and it belongs here on the cosmic map. This
This is where it is. And this is another part of me. And then you're fully aware of what everything's purpose is. And I'm going to sum all this up like this, because obviously we can get into questions and continue to talk about this all day. But I'll sum it up as this, because it sounds like some people still want to uh, go back and forth. They still want to go here and then here. So let me solve it for you. Right here. Right here in most people's body, at least most of them that I ran into, is an area known as the root chakra. Now, the root chakra is one of the lower parts of the body. And we're drawing a, a, a phallus here and a yoni here, okay? And it's, it's connected directly to the moon because it's about our reproduction and the urges that are necessary for us to continue to reproduce. And that's why if anything is, is like if a man depletes his semen, the body will completely shut down all other higher faculties just to re, uh, replenish that because the DNA already knows that its primary instructions is to survive. So now look at this. This lower area of the body, which has also been given the esoteric term as bow, being the lord or lowered, as we talked about before, is like a fire, which gets the whole quotient of why God is a, a flaming fire, right? And why feathered father loves fire through friction. And you see that it's really the F term. But what happens here is, is that, let's say, for instance, someone has an improperly working reproductive system, meaning that they've been putting so much stuff in the black hole of their mouth that when it's going through their body, it's destroying all their other plants because they want to eat something artificial and destroy their entire body. And then what they'll end up doing is the, their lower or bowels will turn against them. And then once the bowels turn against them, they're finished. You see? And that's what they say when the Lord is against us. <laughs> so what happens here is, is that, now let's say, for instance, this person has this only interpretation of what the bowels really is. That the bowels is some evil God, Lord, blah, blah, blah. They totally missed the point. Because, honestly, this same faculty that can cause disease and destruction and low vibration throughout your own body is actually the entire the generator itself to activate your kundalini or your memory or who you really were. So, which one is it? It's both, based on what you do. So, ego, reptilian, pyramid, cross, Lucifer, all the rest of these words that everyone keeps coming up with to describe something, and by the way, English is not very good at doing that, when they're not solved, run around like monsters and skeletons and ghosts and stuff that we feel inferior to be able to deal with. So then what do we do? We call on God. But this God that we're calling on, in most people in the state, is outside. There's no God outside. So that means they're calling on something that doesn't exist. Like I said before, the Vatican is vacant. There's no God there. I mean, there's no real spirit of, of what the real interpretation of God is. But here's the problem. This is a correct interpretation. This is the last thing I'll show people, just to see how far we still have to go with this and how you can totally get played if you're paying, paying attention to non-experience. God is God. God is good. Good is God. Because God, good, and God is the Germanic word for the God of darkness. I mean, their entity of darkness. So the word is still what it's supposed to be. It means darkness. That's why the God says, let there be light. How can you say, let there be light, if you are light? That, see, they're not confused about what they're doing. It may be you that's confused about what this means that was created when you were here, but you forgot. And that's what this whole remembering thing is about. So I want to say homeless and balanced vibration to everyone. Of course, we'll be forward in two weeks with season two. Well, actually, I'm not sure. I think there'll be another postseason show before the first season two show, possibly. But uh, obviously, this, this is way more expansive than uh, you can even write on a blackboard. But I'm pretty sure, a whiteboard. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure everyone is able to grasp some level of information out of what this is presenting here. But I will tell everyone this. If for some reason that this is not working for you or who we are does not work for you, you have the opportunity to continue to move on and find something that will. 
Don't waste your time in trying to harmonize or trying to understand or understand something that your mind keeps fighting. And then I want to explain this to people, and this is why. Because sometimes, like, if I look at a spiritual book, I'm, in like, a, like the Bible, I see something totally different than a person that may be a Christian or something else. So it's a different interpretation based on how much you actually know about it. So don't prejudge what you hear individuals saying based on your limited interpretation. If you want to stick with this, then there will obviously be some level of expansion, just like there's always expansion when you can find morsels of the truth these days. Meaning that right now, you don't really find people trying to say, hey, pick yourself up, help others pick themselves up, and getting real methods to do that while still delving back into all this stuff that we've experienced through life and putting a real definition to it so we can say, ah, okay, that's why. So that's why they, in, in the uh, Arab countries, don't call God, God. They don't even have that word in their language. They call him Allah. And then that's why when you go to a, this other country, they don't use the word Allah, because that's not the name of the entity that they know to be the supreme being. Why? Because they all came from different soul groups. So everyone's imagining that their archangel and high brother Nephilim, Anunnaki, whatever, is the only one that has been seafaring people across this universe. Come on. That's the limited explanation of what we've been given of something that is actually limitless. So even the individuals that probably were attempting to explain it just did the best they could based on the rudimentary level of understanding that we were at at that point. Now, what level of understanding are we at now? And this is what this day for, forget the past, it's a few steps behind, and Earth's already got a time lag, but you need to talk about from this state forward, what are you going to do? How are you going to take in this knowledge? Are you going to remain the same individual that still seems to be puzzled about it? Or are you going to realize that your incomprehension of it may be because something, as far as a filter is concerned inside of your body, may be clogged and thus not allowing you to see it in its true light. And so I want to say wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone. Thank you again for tuning in. And as I said, we'll be back in two weeks. There's a lot of stuff going on. You'll be hearing from us in between then, but it's been just another amazing show. It's been always excellent in being with you, giving you this information. And of course, it's also expanded me because I'm involved in it.